In this video, we're going to be pushing Microsoft Paint to its absolute limits, and we'll be using this free software to create stunning battlefield maps. Specifically, in this video, you will learn how to make the map that is on the screen behind me. This is one of nearly a hundred maps that I have made in paint over the years, and I've made them in a variety of styles, including grid maps, hex maps, board game maps, and of course, all of the maps that you see in our Little Wars TV series. This tutorial is going to focus on how you can make the same style maps we use on Little Wars TV. You can use Microsoft Paint to make any map style that you want, really, but as a kid, I grew up reading Armchair General Magazine, and I kind of fell in love with the clean, uh, easy to read map artwork. Now, before we go any further, I think that I am legally, or maybe morally obligated to tell you that Microsoft Paint is not the ideal program for map making. You could make the map that we are about to in half of the time or less if you were using a program like Adobe Photoshop. Or if you're cheap, you could even use GIMP, a free online software. So why do I continue to use Microsoft Paint? Well, uh, I grew up using Microsoft Paint, so I'm very familiar with it. I like the simple interface. I've gotten to be quite fast over the years with Paint, and I guess I'm just a glutton for punishment. Disclaimer complete. Now let's learn how to use Microsoft Paint to make a map. So here we go on our opening screen at Paint, and if you look down at the bottom, you can see the resolution size. I am going to go into Properties, and I am going to set a custom size, uh, 1920 by 1080. That is the dimension that I use for every map, but you can use whatever you want. Now I'm going to zoom out, and if you look back at the bottom of the screen, you'll now see that it is 1920 by 1080. So this is our blank canvas. Now for the first step here, I'm going to start setting some custom colors. Um, these are the colors that I like to use based on the look of those uh, armchair general maps that I told you about in the magazines. Uh, you can play around with whatever colors you want, but uh, I am going to create a series of custom colors for this map, and... I will put all those colors available for you here. So right on the screen, you will see exactly the full set of colors that I ended up using. There are three different shades of green. There's a light shade of blue that you're gonna use for your water. There's also a road color. And uh, finally, there's gonna be a color set here for trees. Then I'm gonna go ahead and save this file. This is gonna be our base layer. We're gonna save a whole series of files here because paint does not have layering ability. When we are ready to go, I am going to grab the lightest shade of green with the fill bucket and fill it green. So this is our base layer, and I'm going to save that as well. Now I'm going to show you the reference maps that I used. Uh, this is just a Microsoft Word document where I have been collecting various historical maps of the battlefield. So I'm going to end up using quite a few of these maps in order to build ours, but we're going to start with this one because it is a Google map. If you look down at the bottom of the screen, you will note that it is 1920 by 1080. You can see that down here. Uh, that is the same scale as my base map. And that's because uh, I'm going to use this Google map in order to make sure that all the dimensions are correct for the layout of the rivers and towns. If you look up at the top of the screen and down the left side right here, you will see the ruler tools. If you don't have them, you can go under your tools. Right here I am toggling the ruler on and off. You are definitely going to want it on. There is a grid option as well. Uh, I always leave the grid option off. I think it's just uh, a little overkill. So once you've got your rulers toggled on, um, you can see that I'm going to use this map to try and build the river, the Somme River. So let's go ahead and send that over to another screen. And here we are with our base map. I'm going to select the light blue and pick a brush. I'm going to try this wide brush right here. You can zoom out just to see if it's the width that you want. In this case, it is. So uh, you could use the pencil tool, any number of tools. I just happen to like using the brush for water features. And then I'm going to start marking the map uh, based on the reference map. So on one screen, I am looking at this map. And on the other screen, I actually have open the reference map. And I am trying to get the main 
uh, features of this waterway to be as accurate as possible, and then I just sort of fill in where necessary. So I am just kind of going back and forth, looking at the ruler tool on the reference map, comparing it to the ruler tool on my map to make sure that the, uh, the turns and bends of this river are accurate. And then when it's time to scroll over, I'll just pull this bar over and I'll continue forming the river as best I can. Uh, this is a little bit of an imperfect science, admittedly. I am not tracing. I have made maps where I traced before, but this is a little bit more of a freehand map. I'm just using that ruler tool to try and get close. And then you can go back in and fill in. So here is the, the image that I had open on my second screen. This is the Google map. And you can see that I'm trying to use the ruler tool to copy that map as best I can freehand. This is the two screen setup that I talked about, just comparing the ruler on one to the ruler on the other to try and make sure that the river is as accurate as possible. Now we're gonna go back just to my base layer map and that is the Somme River. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a new file. I'm not saving over top of the base map, I'm actually saving a separate file. I'm gonna use a different reference map to fill in the lesser rivers and tributaries as well as the elevations. It's a nice elevation map. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick a smaller brush, a little bit of a finer size, gonna keep the same color. And as you can see here, I am just sort of fast forwarding through the process as I build out the rest of the lesser rivers using the smaller brush. Then I am going to start with the elevations. I have picked the next shade of green, my second shade, and I like to use the pencil tool for this, a nice fine pencil. And here I am tracing in what's going to be the next tier of elevations. It's probably pretty hard for you to see that right now, but shortly I will use the, uh, the bucket fill tool to fill that in and you'll see it. So let's grab the bucket and now you see it. Whoop, a little mistake there. Hit undo. Uh, there's probably a gap somewhere on that second pencil line, so I'm just gonna zoom in and try and find it. That sometimes happens on the edges here, and that should do it. There we go. So now I've got the next tier of elevation complete. We'll skip forward in time a little bit here, and I'll fill in the last, the last bit of that uh, elevation. And then when I am ready, I will save this, again, as a new file. I'm not overwriting any of my files. This will be a separate elevation file and I'll pick my final shade of green. This is my darkest green. Grab the pencil tool again, and I will go in and I will sketch this next tier of elevations. And then we'll use the bucket tool to fill that in. Again, this is uh, an imperfect science, a lot of artistry involved here. This is not gonna be a completely accurate map, but I'm doing the best that I can. And we're using the reference map that I had showed you a little bit earlier. Right here is the reference map. And I'm just trying to use that. I've got it open on a second screen, trying to get you know, as accurate as I can within reason to get the elevations correct. For the next step, I'm gonna use yet another reference map. And this map, I'm mainly interested in the location of the towns, the roads, and the railroads. And I'd like to try and be a little bit more accurate and precise here than I was when I did the elevations. So I'm gonna grab black and just lighten it up a little bit. I don't like using pure black, it seems a little stark, so I'm going to lighten that up a shade. And now I'm gonna start laying down locations. Right now I'm looking at the town of Amiens and I'm using that ruler tool on the top and on the left side of the screen. I'm comparing it to the map that I have open on the other screen. We'll put Villers Bocage up here, try and get as accurate as we can to its historical location. This is what the map looks like when I have all my landmarks and I'm gonna save it again as its own file just for the landmarks. The next step of this process, uh, I'm gonna start putting down the railroads. And in order to do that, I actually wanna get rid of this landmark. So I'm just going to scrap that. I like to use the straight line tool and I am going to create a series of interconnected straight lines following the path uh, as best I can of where this railroad is going to be. So as you can see, we're building the railroad right now. You can just sort of play around with these lines. Uh, occasionally I will undo or erase them if I don't like the way that they look. 
and I'm comparing them to the reference map that I have open on the screen next to me to try and get the railroad as historically accurate as possible. And we just kind of keep building it one bit, one piece at a time, adding straight lines on, and this is what the final product looks like when I've zoomed out. Those are the railroads. Now I will go back and I will add the railroad ties. Uh, these I'm doing by freehand, trying to keep the spacing as even as possible to complete the railroad. And when you're done, you're gonna have something that looks like this. Now I'm gonna move on to the roads. I will use my road color. I'm actually gonna keep the same thickness of line. And I'm gonna start with this road right here, filler bocage to Amiens. And as you can see, I'm still using that straight line tool just working my way around and I'm going to work my way down to the town of Amiens using these roads. I'm not going to completely cover up that landmark symbol yet. Um, I'm going to leave that unconnected and you'll see us fill that in in a little bit. Uh, you could use the pencil tool. You might be wondering why not use the pencil tool in order to draw the roads. Uh, that's what it would look like. I'm just going to erase it and undo it. Uh, I find the pencil tool a little bit harder to control than doing just the little bit of straight line that gets interconnected, but whatever works best for you is fine. So here is our completed road network. You can see all the roads have been finished on this map. And I'm going to zoom into this town and I'm going to show you how we're going to finish this town out. I'm going to get rid of the temporary symbol that I put here. And I'm just going to go back to the color of the roads, grab the straight line tool, and I'm going to tidy this up, complete the road network. Then I'm going to go back to my dark gray, and you can use whatever size you want here for this, but uh, I'm going to start dropping in some tiny little buildings. And these, of course, are just representational. I mean, this is not going to be completely accurate. I'm doing whatever size buildings that I want, and I'm just gonna very hastily populate these in here based on the rough area of the town. Now, if we look at a bigger town like Amiens right here, you can see that I've got a lot more buildings, and that's because I'm using my reference map, and Amiens is a much larger town. So I'm just gonna populate this with some random buildings inside the road network to fill it out. And this is essentially how you complete all of the towns and villages. You can see here, uh, I've got the two screens set up, uh, the reference on my right, the map I'm building on my left, and I'm not going to put all of these towns on the map. That would be overcrowding and overpopulating a little bit. So I'm only putting what I feel are the most significant towns. Uh, clearly there's gonna be some artistic license involved in that. For the next step in the process, we are going to add some text. So I like to use Arial, and I will bold that Arial. And you can play around with whatever size, text, or font that you want here, whatever looks right. I do like to make sure that the most significant landmarks are in the largest size text. So Amiens, being the, the largest town here, is, is going to have the biggest font size. And you're just going to drag it around and place it wherever it looks good. And then I'm gonna jump down to lower font sizes as I work through the next most significant landmark. So Albert will be my next one. My apologies to anyone who actually speaks French. I have no idea if that's how you pronounce the name of this town, but you will drag this around and put it down. So I'm working my way through the rest of the towns and as I get to the least important towns, uh, I keep uh, diminishing the font size. So we're gonna place our last town right here. Of course, I am missing the Somme River, so I'm gonna grab a blue color right here, a light blue, and I'm gonna put in the Somme. Gonna make that just a little bit bigger, and then I can drag that around to an area that looks appropriate, wherever you want. It's gonna end up right over here. And then we're gonna go ahead and save that, again, as its, its own separate file, and I will import my map legend. I built that legend elsewhere. I'll drop the legend in, I'm going to save this again as a separate file. And as I drop the map legend in, I am of course realizing that I have forgotten to add the woods. Normally I would add those before the text, luckily there's not a whole lot of woods to add. So I'm going to grab the uh, green color that I use for the woods and I'm going to use the natural pencil tool. Natural pencil is what I use for the woods. 
And when you're ready, you're just gonna use the mouse to kind of swirl it around in a circular motion, and that's basically how you build the woods. Uh, natural pencil is, is pretty nice because uh, the more that you hover over a certain spot, the darker the color will be. So we're just filling in the woods at our leisure here, and you might be asking yourself, well, how do I know where the woods go on a historical map like this? Well, hopefully you've got a pretty good reference map that you can use. Uh, in this case, here is my best reference map that has woods on it. Shows some woods on this part of the battlefield. Um, it really doesn't show much else on the battlefield. So in a pinch, I will use a Google map like you see right here. Uh, clearly this is a modern map, so this would not be historically accurate for 1918, but uh, most of this area was farmland, so I'll build some woods that follow the rivers, and that's about it. I'm gonna add a little bit of extra woods based on the map that I saw just outside of this town. Uh, again, this is pretty much artistic license at this point. Um, if you don't have a great map that's historically accurate, then you just sort of have to use your own judgment on where you want to put the woods. This is the completed map that I finished. This took me about three hours to do, but I am pretty quick with paint, so if it's your first time, it may take you a little bit longer. Remember, step one was the base layer color. Step two, we added the water. In the third step, we saved a file that had our three different elevation colors. In the fourth step, we added landmarks and uh, towns and railroads. Step five, we completed the rest of the road network. On the sixth file, I added in all of the little towns and villages. In the seventh file, I added text. And on the eighth and final file, I added the map legend and belatedly added the woods. Well, that's it, guys. Lots of viewers on YouTube asked us how we make our maps at Little Wars TV, and, well, now you know, and now you can do it yourself. Microsoft Paint is uh, not the ideal tool to do this job, but it is the one that I use. It is cheap, it is easy, and it's also, as you can see, quite tedious. If you enjoyed this Microsoft Paint map making tutorial, please uh, click up here to subscribe to Little Wars TV. And if you'd like to see one of our other modeling tutorials, I probably can get a video somewhere over here next to me. If you'd like to see more map making tutorials specifically, maybe uh, other styles and variations of making maps in Microsoft Paint, let us know in the comments below.